we've done unit rates and we've done um, some double number lines. And we've done both those with integers. We haven't really talked about um, how to use them with fractions. We've done a little bit of fractions, but we have to use this idea of what's called a complex fraction. Okay. Um, here you go. Here's your definition. I would uh, suggest putting this in your note, uh, in your notes, uh, and we'll take a look here and see which uh, what these actually look like. So a complex fraction is when we have a fraction in the numerator, in the denominator, or uh, maybe both. Both the numerator and the denominator are fractions. So let's take a look. Here are some examples of com complex fractions. Okay, and what we're doing here is. It's, it's kind of important to understand which of them is the numerator and which is the denominator. So in this first one, take a look and see if you can figure out which one is uh, the numerator here and which is the denominator. Okay, so hopefully uh, you looking and you decide, saw that one half in this case, right? In this case, it's one half, all right, is the numerator. That's being divided into six pieces, okay? So I'm taking one half and breaking it into six groups. No, get out of there. Okay, and then take a look at the second one and decide what's going on there. All right, so um, I have this one is eight divided into two thirds. Okay, so this together is actually the denominator. Okay, and then let's take a look at the third one. And looking at the third one, actually, this is a really complex fraction because I have three fourths, right? And I'm dividing it into groups of one half, okay? So this is the big division symbol here, okay? So taking three fourths and dividing it into half. All right, let's move on. All right, so the steps for solving these are going to be pretty much the exact same thing. All right, first we're going to draw our double number line. We're going to identify the units. We're going to put units on the number line. We're going to find the ratio that we know. We're going to plan where we're going to put it on the on the number line. Um, then we're going to put the ratio we know in the number line, and then we're going to use that information to find some other ratios. Okay, I would suggest pausing the video and writing this down. All right, so here's an example. All right, uh, John Cena walked half a mile in one quarter of an hour. How fast did John Cena walk? Okay. Now the reason I was talking about the complex fractions is you could do this um, without a doubled number line and I'll show you how to do that in a second here but let's first start with the double number line. Alright so first thing we're going to do is identify our units. We're walking uh, a distance, right? Half a mile. So I've got miles and I've got hours, all right? And then I'm trying to find how much did John, how fast did he walk, right? So I'm trying to figure out a how fast, right? And fast means how, his speed. What is his speed? What is his speed? That's what I'm really trying to find here, right? And how am I going to try to find it? Well, I'm going to do miles per hour, okay? And what that's going to look like is it's going to be some number of miles, we don't know yet, right? Some number, and per one hour. So what we need to do is we need to find a unit rate. We need to find how much it is for one hour. So I'm going to put miles on the top here, and I'm going to put one hour here, and I'm going to assume that, well, in this case, if he was walking for zero hours, he would walk zero miles, okay? Now, let's decide what, what it is we know. Well, we know we have one half mile in one quarter of an hour, and I'm trying to find out one hour, right? So I know less than one hour. So in fact, I'm going to put this in here, and I'm going to say one hour, okay? And I'm going to find the miles, and then I'm just going to go through here, and I'm going to divide this into fourths, okay? Because I know in one fourth of an hour, he goes one half of a mile, okay? And I'm going to put in, so then I've got two fourths of an hour, which is the same as a half, and then three fourths of an hour, right? And then one hour is the same as four fourths. Those are equivalent, okay? And now what I can do is I can just sort of count by, right? I can just keep going by one half, right? So one half, this would be two halves, Okay, and then if I go again, this would be three halves. Okay, and if I go again, this would be four halves. So what he does is, in one hour, he travels four halves of a mile. Well, four halves of a mile is two, right? So how fast is he going? Well, in one hour, he travels two miles. So he's walking at two miles for one hour. Okay, so his speed here would be two miles per hour. 
right? Now, let's say I wanted to do this as a complex fraction, okay? Because the double number line is not the only way to do it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, all right, if I need to find miles, right, in one hour, all right, well, I'm going to set this up so I know that this is setting my ratio here is telling me which things to put in already. I know I have to go one half mile, okay, and I'm going to divide it by one fourth hour. Okay, so now I have a complex fraction. I'm taking one half divided by one fourth, okay? Well, that's the same as divided by one fourth. And you remember, hopefully, that when you divide a fraction, what we end up doing is we multiply by the reciprocal, okay? And so then I'm going to end up with four halves, which is the same, which is two miles per hour. Okay, nice work, John Cena. Let's take a look at another one. All right, Mr. Clark rode his bike two and a half miles in one third hour. How fast did he ride? All right, so first let's identify our units here. All right, I got miles and I got hour, and I need to know how fast, right? So how fast means miles. You could do MPH, but I think before you do this, it's important that you understand that MPH, right, miles per hour, is miles in one hour. Okay, so I've identified my units. Let's go ahead and put in the chart here. And I want to find out one hour, right? So I'm going to put, put hour here, and we'll put miles here, okay? And I'm, I know one-third of an hour, uh, and I need to find one hour. So if I put this over here, okay, I'm going to plan. I want my one hour here. No one know how many miles it is, okay? And then I need, and I know one-third. So I'm going to break this up into thirds, so here and here. So I've got one third, and then two thirds, and then one hour is the same as three thirds. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill in, okay, two and a half miles, right? So this would be two and a half, all right? And then if I do, if I go another one third, right? Notice this is a third, these are the piece same size. So if there's one of these things, one of these. So if I do two of these, so two and a half times two, right? Two and a half again is gonna be five, right? Because it's two plus two, uh, and then a half and a half, right? So two and a half plus two and a half is equal to two plus two is four, and a half and a half is two halves. Two halves is one, so this is five, okay? That's how I got that. <clears throat> and then let's go ahead, and I'm going to do it one more time. So two and a half plus five is going to be another two and a half miles will be seven and a half miles, right? So I'm going seven and a half miles per hour. Okay, so when I'm riding my bike, I'm traveling at seven, and because this is a fraction, I'm gonna leave it as a fraction, okay? You could also write uh, as a decimal, but we're gonna leave it here, seven and a half miles in one hour. <coughs> Excuse me, or you could say seven and a half miles per hour. Okay, this one I like better though, because it shows me that you fully understand. And again, keeping the ratios nice and lined up, using the units, I think it's just a nicer way of doing it. Okay, and again, you could have done this by um, using a complex fraction and said, let's take a look at that. Let's do it that way. This would be, right, I'm doing miles, right, per hour. So in order to find my unit rate for this, I'm going to take two and a half and divide it by one third, okay? Well, if you do that, we can say two and a half, right? Divided by one third, okay? Well, this is gonna be multiplying, right? So I'm gonna get two and a half times three over one. Well, there's a problem here. You can't take two and a half and multiply it by three here unless we actually change this. We should change this into a improper fraction, okay? So <clears throat> let's do uh, two times two is four plus one, so this is the same as five halves times three over one, so that's 15 halves, which is seven and a half, okay? Same idea. I think find the one that you find the most success with, all right? I would definitely use the number line to start with, and then if you can, if you are feeling pretty good about using the uh, dividing fractions, then go ahead and do that. All right, let's do one more. Okay, Mrs. Johnson visited Meyer since they were having a sale on jelly beans. So Mrs. Johnson paid two dollars and seventy cents for two thirds pounds of jelly beans. What is the sale price for jelly beans? So 
in this case, sale price, all right? So let's, that's what we're trying to find. So we know dollars and we know pounds, okay? Now, sale price typically is a unit rate, meaning it's the number of dollars you spend for one pound, right? So I want to know dollars for one, and LB is the, is the abbreviation for pound, okay? LB. I don't actually know why. I should look that up and let you guys know. Or maybe one of you guys can look it up and let me know what LB or why it stands for that. So now what I'm going to do is I want you to go ahead and try to solve this problem. Okay? Um, go ahead. Okay. So let me walk you through it. So since I'm doing dollars per pound, I like to try to stay consistent with... Um, the way my ratio is set up. So if like dollars is on top and I'm trying to, you know, per pound, I try to set it up the same way. So this would be like the numerator and the denominator. Okay. So I know in this case, I know two thirds of a pound and I want to find one pound, right? So I need to find one pound uh, and I don't know how much that costs and I know two thirds, right? So two thirds. So I'm going to split my line up into thirds, right? So here's two thirds of a pound and I know that's two dollars and seventy cents okay well two thirds um, I can't just take two thirds and get to this would be three thirds right I can't just go from here to here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back I'm gonna tell you how much does one third cost okay so I can just divide two dollars and seventy cents by half and I get dollar thirty five okay so look a dollar thirty five two dollars and seventy cents now what I can do is I can take two dollars and seventy cents and add another dollar thirty five okay line up my decimals zero plus five this becomes zero that's a one so I get four dollars and five cents four dollars five cents so in this case the sale price is four dollars five cents per pound of jelly beans Okay, hopefully that made some sense. Um, be sure to answer the very last question on uh, your Ed Puzzle here, and I will see you guys in class.